Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the woven stitch dishcloth. This is part of a learn a stitch, make a dishcloth series and let me give you a closer view of this. This is a very interesting stitch and it's a really low cost way, you know, low investment way to learn how to crochet a new stitch. And these are very um, helpful, very useful, very practical. You can use this as a dishcloth for dishes. If you use the recommended cotton that I use, it's called I Love This Cotton, it is soft enough, I believe, to use for a baby cloth or even a spa cloth, you know, for cleaning your face. It's really, really a nice high quality cotton. And also you will be learning how to work the low front ridge worked in the round or around the corners in a square. And if you also have the option that if you don't want to use that finishing, you can just finish with two rounds of single crochet. It's really all up to you. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using the I Love This cotton, which is a very nice, soft, 100% cotton yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn. Each of these skeins has 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, or 180 yards, or 165 meters. I'm going to be using a different color than white for the demonstration, but obviously you can use any color you wish. And if you don't have this particular type of cotton yarn, not a problem. Use whichever worsted weight cotton you may have available. And just for the record, we're not even going to come close to using the entire skein of yarn. I'm recommending that you use a crochet hook size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter. And as always, I recommend that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy for hiding the loose ends. To begin, I'm going to make a slip knot. And we're going to work a starting chain of 25 chains. Once you've completed those 25 chains, and for the record, if you want to make this larger, wider, you can just add multiples of two to this beginning chain. Or you can just start with any multiple of two plus one. All right, so now we're going to start in the second chain from hook, and we are going to work a single crochet in each chain across. And for the record, we are going to work a perimeter round, so the rest of this starting chain will be completely covered over if you're worried about that in any way. So go ahead and work those single crochets across the row. At the end of row one, you should have a total of 24 single crochets. Now we're going to turn and begin row two, and this is where we begin the woven stitch. We're going to start with a chain two. We're going to skip the first stitch right here, and we're going to start in the second stitch. We're going to wrap the hook, insert under both loops, pull up a loop, then we pull through a loop, then we yarn over and pull through. That's half of the woven stitch. We're going to do this a little differently again. We yarn over, insert into the same place, pull up a loop, and then just pull through two loops without wrapping, and that completes the woven stitch. Now, we're gonna work these in every other stitch across the row, so we're gonna skip the next stitch, and we're gonna work another woven stitch. I'll do this very slowly, because I know that this is a slightly different muscle memory feel than the traditional crochet stitches. So we wrap the hook, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert into the same place, pull up a loop, and then just pull through two. The oddity of this is you do not wrap for the second section or second part of this stitch. Let's do that again. Yarn over, we're gonna skip the next stitch, and in the next stitch, insert, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the same place, pull up a loop, pull through two. 
Let's do that again. Skip the next stitch, wrap the hook, insert, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert again, pull up a loop, and then pull through two. And this is what this looks like. It's a very unique looking stitch, which also happens to be um, reversible. And it's it's a I think it's a beautiful stitch and it looks different enough to be very interesting. So let's go ahead and finish this across the row. I'll do one more with you. Skip the next stitch. We're wrapping the hook. Insert, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, wrap again, insert into the same place, pull up a loop, and pull through two. So go ahead and finish this across the row. So after working this all the way across, we do work the last stitch in the last stitch of row one, which is right here. So you should have a total of 12 woven stitches plus the chain two corner, or the chain two rather, at the beginning of the row. Let's go ahead and turn. We're going to use chain twos at the end of each row, so or at the beginning, depending on how you look at this. So chain two at the beginning of this row, and we're going to work the woven stitches all the way across, and we're going to work them in the spaces that you see here in between the woven stitches. So we're not going to be skipping stitches like we were when we were skipping the traditional stitches down here. Okay, so I'll do this with you. Wrap the hook, insert, pull up a loop, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, wrap, pull up a loop, and then pull through two. And again, in between the woven stitches only. Now it can look like there are two stitches here, but there really aren't. This constitutes one stitch, so just wanted to be clear about that so that you're not working in through the top loops. We're just working in between the woven stitches and the spaces are quite clear. So go ahead and work this all the way across and I will show you how the row ends. After working those woven stitches all the way across, we're going to work the last one in the chain two space. Just like that. Let's pause and take a look. And again, you should have 12 woven stitches and the chain two at the beginning of the row. So what we're going to do now is repeat row three, which is the last row that we just completed until our dishcloth is a square. And again, just to re refresh your memory, we chain two at the beginning of these rows and we work the wattle stitches in between every set of wattle stitches, just like that. So continue repeating row three until this measures the length that you would like it to be. And an easy way to check to see if it is a square is you can fold one corner onto another and I'll show you how to do that. After working 18 rows, 17 of which are the woven stitch, this is what you should have. And if you fold corner to corner and this side evenly, you can see that we are almost at a square. Once we work the next row, which is going to match the row one, it will be a square. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is the row that will discontinue the woven stitch. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to just chain one at the beginning of this row. And we're going to work two single crochets in the space in between the woven stitches. So go ahead and work that across two single crochets in between each woven stitch. 
So after finishing those two single crochets in the chain two turning chain, we're going to turn 90 degrees, chain two, and then we're gonna work one single crochet in the same place as where the last two stitches were worked. Now this is what we're going to repeat along the sides. We're gonna work one single crochet in the next row in, and then two single crochets in the next row in, which is where the chain two was made at the, as the turning chain. So again, one single crochet in the next row in, two in the next row in. So go ahead and work that until you get to the corner. After working this all the way across, go ahead and work a single crochet in that last row, which was that single crochet row. Go ahead and turn 90 degrees, chain two, and we're going to work another single crochet. You can either work it in the same place. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to be the one that would have been in place of that first chain. And let's go ahead and work single crochets in each of those chains all the way across. And let me show you. If you're not sure where to put your hook, find the stitch that is now upside down and just put it in the same place opposite where that stitch was worked. So go ahead and work that all the way across. After working those all the way across that foundation row, let's go ahead and turn 90 degrees again chain two and we're going to go ahead and start by working a single crochet in the same place as the last and then go ahead and work two single crochets in that next row end one in the next row end two in the next row end similarly to what we did on the other side one and then two So go ahead and work that to the corner. This perimeter round ends by working a single crochet in the same place where the first one was worked, chain two, again turn 90 degrees, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet. All right, now we're ready to move on to the next perimeter round, and we're going to keep the same side facing us as we chain one and we're going to work slip stitches in each stitch all the way around and I'll show you how to do this. We are working only in the front loop. Work slip stitch. This is going to leave a nice little edge, a raised edge along the perimeter of the square. So go ahead and work that and I'll show you what to do when you get to the chain two corners. When you get to the chain two corners, we're going to skip the corner and we're going to go right to the next single crochet, that front loop, just like that, and continue on around. Now, when we do the next round, we will be working in the chain two corner. So if you find it be, to be more helpful, you can stick a stitch marker in those chain twos now so that you don't have to worry about trying to find them. Or you can just kind of pull up on them like that because we are going to be working in those on the next round. So go ahead and finish working these slip stitches around all the sides and I will show you how to connect at the end of the round. And this is what you should have after you've worked this all the way around. Now I'm going to show you a special join. I haven't joined this yet and I want to join it in such a way that the seam does not uh, is not obvious. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to trim a generous strand I would say that's about eight inches or so. We're going to 
we're going to run this into our yarn needle. So let me show you how to finish this off. I've taken the crochet hook away and I've thread the extra strand into my yarn needle. We're going to come into, up through the loop. We're going to come into the very first, actually it's the turning chain, and come around and then back down into this stitch. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit further in the back, just like that. And so now it is hidden. So let's go ahead and fasten this off by running it under several stitches so that it will not come undone, especially since we have not tied it in any knot or secured it in any way. So, and with the cotton, the, the um, friction with these fibers should hold this very secure because that way each of these rounds will be independent of each other and I think it just gives a much better presentation than if we chained one and turned because then the two rounds will kind of look interconnected and we really don't want that. We'll go ahead and trim that. So now we have the one round. The next round we're going to work will be single crochets worked in the remaining loops and I'll show you how to join that right now. So we're going to get the rest of our yarn and we're going to start by joining this in one of the chain two corners which are here. Let's go ahead and put the yarn or, or the hook into that hole and make a slip knot. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work three single crochets into that chain two space. And now working in the remaining loops of the stitches, we're going to work one single crochet. Let me make sure. There we go. One single crochet in each of those remaining loops. Let's go ahead and look at the back side. You'll see the loops that are left here of the single crochets. I know this may be a little bit difficult for some of you. I mean, if you don't want to do it in this way, you could certainly just work an alternative uh, finishing or you could just work another, another round of single crochets all the way around for your uh, cloth here but I think this adds a little bit more interest. So this was, this is the low front ridge and I'm using a technique where you can work this in the round. Okay, so that's the edging effect. So I'm going to go ahead and work this to the next corner. So once I get to the next chain two corner, let's go ahead it's a little bit tight, but go ahead and work three single crochets into that chain two corner. Then we turn 90 degrees again and just continue on with the single crochets in that remaining loop. We're, again, we're working in the remaining loop of that single crochet from the first perimeter round. Okay, and this is what the corners will look like. So go ahead and work that all the way around and I will show you the join at the end. So I've worked this all the way around. I am not going to work in that last loop because I am going to bring this connection to this single crochet and then that's going to overlap the area there. So let's go ahead and cut a nice generous strand Let's get our yarn needle again. There we go. Let's pull that loop down to it's just about the right size. Come into the loop. We're essentially making a chain with this and then go under. This is, these are the two loops of that single crochet. Pull that closer and then go back down 
and then into the back of the stitch go ahead and go down a couple loops there so help to secure it and there you go doesn't look like we skipped a stitch at all and so now I'm going to bring this down a little bit lower and I'm going to run it under under a lot of these stitches here so that it will be secured and since we're not tying it into a knot or securing it in that way go ahead and run it under several stitches not just two or three so we don't want this thread to to resurface or to come out later okay I think that should be enough all right and let's go ahead and trim this very carefully and I did have one other strand to hide so let me go ahead and hide this one and then I'll show you what I have I well, hope you enjoyed making the woven stitch dishcloth with me today. If you did, I would really love to hear from you. Please consider commenting in the comment section below. God bless. Bye-bye.